Hey guys, this is going to be my part two in our conversation or discussion about trust. Because, you know, after narcissistic abuse, I highly recommend you examine the way that you approach and view and, you know, utilize trust in your life and the people that you interact with. Okay? Because, you know, chances are you definitely, you know, trusted this narcissist prematurely. Okay? So let's continue the discussion on trust. You know, we know that we've given somebody more trust than they deserved or more trust than they can handle, basically, because they fumbled the ball. You know, when they fumbled the ball, we trusted them to do this and they're not able to deliver it. That was more trust than they could handle. That was more trust than they deserved to have from us. That's why you hear a lot of people say, check your expectations in life, because it's all connected. The expectations are what you're trusting someone to do. That's your trust. If I expect you to do something, I'm trusting that you're going to do it. So the higher my expectations, of course, the higher the level that I'm trusting this person to deliver X, Y, and Z. You know what I do in life is basically I hope for the best and I prepare for the worst you know so I'm covering all my angles and I'm still being optimistic but I've considered the worst as well this eliminates me being blindsided it eliminates me being ill prepared for a situation or a scenario that can happen and pop off because my mind is open doesn't mean that I'm saying this person is going to do the worst case scenario no but it means that I've at least considered it. And that's what you have to do. You have to be able to consider it. A lot of you don't even want to consider things that go against what you want. But that's a part of how we can be sabotaging ourselves and setting ourselves up for disappointments. Because we're not even allowing ourselves to step outside of our perceptions. And I made a video about that being able to step outside of your own perception and see angles in life because we can get blinded by our own wants and desires and that's what happened with the narcissist chances are we want it and we desired a certain relationship with us and they mirrored it to us in the beginning so that made us feel even more better and helped us to actually fall into the tra trap of our arm our own perceptions and desires that much deeper and further so now when the narcissist is starting to deviate from it our flesh and our wants and desires are still clinging on to our wants and desires rather than clinging on to what's real and true what's factual in the situation mm -hmm. so we have to be careful guys and I said this in another video, you know, as far as letting go of things that don't serve us, you know. All right. So I'm, I'm going to allow this relationship because it's working out for me. But now it isn't. I have to consider this now. I'm not going to just still continue to cling on to it out of a habit and pattern when it's no longer serving me. It's run its course. It's not in my best interest anymore. But that comes with the lack of trusting ourselves to be able to let go and move on and do and be better. Okay, so some of you have to actually work on learning how to trust yourselves. You know, because trust is more than just how we interact with others. It's how we interact with ourselves as well. That's where it starts anyway. The root of how we deal with trust is rooted in ourselves. So if we don't trust ourselves, we're going to be looking for somebody else to trust. This is equivalent to the person that 
seemingly can't make a decision for themselves. They're always turning to other people to make decisions for them in life. Need everybody else's say and input and opinions on how they should lead and lead their lives. And some people get so bad at it that they can't even pick out a nail color. <laughs> you know, they can't even pick out an outfit without being on this starting a thread with 10 girlfriends and showing which one should I get like some people are that bad they can't even make the smallest of decisions for themselves there's no trust as opposed to the person that says you know what I'm feeling this I like this I like it I'm feeling it I don't care who else is or isn't this is what I want for me I'm making this decision you know and that's a trust that's a trust in yourself to be able to say, hey, I trust myself. I love myself enough. I'm holding myself enough. I can make decisions on my own life, you know. Now, I'm going to separate that from seeking wise counsel, of course, when you're when you don't understand something or you need more knowledge or you're compiling more facts. But you're doing just that. You're compiling. Okay, I'm going to speak to this person. For instance, you get coaching from me. Okay, well, the Kia seems to know more than I know about this topic. Let me talk to her. And I'm still going to make my own decision afterwards. But it's nice to get that wise counsel in an area where I may be weaker or needing more information or facts to make the best informed decision. Okay. And then, you know, sometimes after narcissistic abuse, we don't trust ourselves because we feel like we made such a poor decision. Like, there must be, you know, something wrong with me. I, I'm i not going to trust myself to make this decision ever again. Like, And then some people shy away from relationships because of it. They don't trust themselves to be able to pick out a healthy mate. It just means that you have some shadow work to do so that you can get yourself back to that trusting place again. Only this time it will be more rooted in healthiness as opposed to before when we were unhealthy and mixed up with the narcissist and then that toxic abuse. But, you know, I'm here to just keep it real with you guys. I'm going to tell you things on my channel and you may not like it and it may go against everything that you've ever felt and thought inside of you. And the things that you may need to still cleanse and purge out of yourself. You know, you may not also, you may not always see that angle right away. Because you're still doing the work within yourself. Or it may be a reality <clears throat> that you don't want to have to accept. Because it may seem negative. It may seem dark to you. But I'm just, you know, I'm here to keep it real. You know. I'm here to keep it real, just like in my last, in part one, where I talked about the husband cheating. You know, some women, they get married based off of the Disney fantasies, you know, and they're expecting perfection out of a man. And then when they don't get it, you know, they're devastated because they didn't even perceive that it would ever happen or could happen. Because they were basing it off of a fantasy to begin with. I mean, just look at the statistics on fidelity and relationships. And these are the people that are being honest. You know, some people will tell lies when they're taking, um, you know, these surveys. Okay. But does that mean that I can't be happy and still have a meaningful relationship? I can. You certainly can. And you just decide for yourself how you want to deal with it. Even if you decide it's a deal breaker, but you're not blindsided by it. And you've thought about it and you, you're making the steps that are in your best interest. And not just emotional. So trust, you know, trust there. They say it. It can get you killed. <laughs> get you killed. Like the lady who meets this psychopath in a bar at night. There's something plastic about him, but she's not trusting herself to feel that. 
Now, he done walked around to 10 other women in the room, and they were creeped out by him. But she's insecure in herself. She hops in his car and finds out the car doors don't unlock. And now they're somewhere crazy in the woods, and he's doing something crazy to her, trying to rape her, trying to kill her, murder her, you know? We have to learn how to trust in a way that protect us. You know? We have to be careful the, the type of expectation and trust that we're extending to people. Once we have a perfect human being, then we can trust somebody 100%. But until that happens, why would you do it? It's totally, you know, not considering the aspect that people are imperfect. And people make mistakes. Or the people have dark sides. People are can be evil. And I want you to think about this. When... When we're giving someone our full, complete trust, you know what we're basically thinking and saying at that point? We're basically saying, I trust that you will put my best interest before your own in every situation that you and I have. And that's not how human beings are wired. It just isn't. And that's why we have to examine how we're trusting people and to what level and degree. When we trust someone 100% or we're giving them too much trust, we're basically saying, I trust you to put me and my needs before your own. And it's simply not how human beings are wired. Maybe your mama can do it. And she might even have a limit. Because she's still human. And she has her own needs to honor within herself. Okay, guys? So I'm going to end this part two video. If this resonates with you, you can go ahead and hit the like button. If you haven't done so already, you can feel free to go ahead and um, subscribe to my channel. I upload videos quite frequently. You can always check the description for every one of my videos to see what I have going on. All right. I do a monthly um, free coaching session. Uh, the month of May is taken care of. So if you want to be in the runners for June, go ahead and shoot an email to coachlakia at gmail.com. Be considered for that. Okay. Um, other than that, I do regular coaching. You can find out that information on lakiacrawford.com. But I do it via email, phone, and Skype. I have all types of packages you can take advantage of. Okay, and right now I am running a special till midnight today, which is um, basically until May 19th, midnight, it's 2018. <laughs> um, you can name your price and you can either do one email response for me if you have a question that you just couldn't get to the bottom of with you and that narcissist or just something about life and yourself. Um, you can do an email or you can do a 45 minute phone call with me and you can lock that in. It doesn't have to be done until tonight, but you can lock it in and shoot me that email and let me know which one you're choosing, okay? And we'll go ahead and do the arrangements. All right, guys, so just, you know, re-examine your trust that you're putting in people and go ahead and watch part one if you haven't done that yet. And, you know, just, sit on it and let it marinate in your your mind if it's something that is the opposite to how you feel about trust and people okay just think about it just think about it but you know at the end of the day i'm just trying to let you know things that are in your best interest you know that will protect you moving forward in life okay guys so until next time take care